Welcome to the second video of Selenium WebDriver. So we are going to see the features of the Selenium WebDriver API as a whole and how do we automate our functional scenarios by using the Selenium WebDriver API which is open source by itself. Going forward we will also understand that Selenium WebDriver API is basically used to run and automate only web applications and the Selenium WebDriver API supports all kind of browsers which are there in the market at this point of time. H2K Infosys uh, is pioneer into giving trainings and is based out of Atlanta, Georgia, United States. It gives uh, live online on-site and video-based IT training. And uh, going forward, we'll see uh, the environment on which I'm going to work. Now, the Selenium WebDriver API has been launched with a new version absolutely it's called the 3 series that is 3.0.0 beta 3 version the beta 3 version was launched in september 1st 2016 so i will be using the as far as the videos are concerned i will be using the 3.0.0 beta 3 version unless i find difficulties in using it because since it's a beta version it's always uh, might be a problem that certain features of Selenium or certain classes or methods of the, in the Selenium API might not work. So under those kind of situations, I will revert back to the last version of 2 series that is 2.53.1. Now as far as our videos are concerned, I will try to make it with Selenium 3.0.0 beta 3 version until unless I have a problem wherein which I will revert back to 2.53.1. Now, as far as 2.53.1 version is concerned, it uses the operating system Windows 10 Home or other flavors of Windows 10. The system type required for Selenium 2.53.1 is 64-bit OS and the RAM should be 4 GB and above. Otherwise, the system is going to hang. In the Firefox version, version browser version is 47.0.1 and I'm very specific on this because otherwise, if we are using... 2.53.1 and you are creating scripts with it it will not work in any other version of firefox it will show you a problem as far as firefox driver is concerned there is no firefox driver required if you are using 2.53.1 version of selenium web driver api if we want to automate or rather run our scripts in chrome browser we have to use the chrome driver the chrome driver version will be 2.22 you can download it from the sections that i'll show you a little point of time and if you want to run our automation scripts in Internet Explorer, we need to use the Internet Explorer driver. It can be the Windows 32 bit with 2.53.1 version or Windows 64 bit 2.53.1. Generally, I've seen that when you use the x64 IE driver server, it works very, very slowly. So instead of that, I prefer to use Windows 32 version of IE driver server with the version 2.53.1 so i will recommend you guys to use the windows 32 bit version of ie driver server now as far as our videos is concerned but the videos will be made on the selenium 3. Dot dot beta 3 version and it requires windows 10 home or other flavors of it it will work and it requires system ties at 64 bit operating system with a 4 gb and above ram the Firefox browser that you can use while you use the 3.0.0 beta 3 version can be 48.0.2. And this is the latest version of Firefox browser. So if we are using Selenium 3 beta 3, we're going to use this particular part. What is this particular version of Firefox? Coming back to using the Firefox browser for the purpose of running our automation script, we need the Firefox driver for it. It's called Geekko driver. Okay. We can use the version 0 0.10.0 Win64 with Firefox version 48.0.2. And if you are going to run our automation scripts using Selenium 3 beta 3 version, we are going to use the Chrome driver to run our automation script in Chrome browser. And the Chrome driver is 2.23 version. That's the latest version. And if you are going to run our automation scripts using Selenium 3.0.0 beta 3 version, and want to run our automation script in IE browser, we need to use the IE or Internet Explorer driver. 
Win32 2.53.1 or X64 2.53.1. Preference is Win32 2.53.1 because it works faster than your X64 version of IE driver server. So we're going to stick to this particular version of Selenium web driver that is 3 series with beta 3. Okay, and unless we have a problem, we'll revert back to 2.53.1. So let's go ahead and start it off. The agenda for this particular video is we need to see first the locator tools. Okay, so <clears throat> and then we, we need to see the first Selenium code by opening up the Firefox browser through the web driver interface. Then how do we work with uh, Chrome and IE browsers? using the same script and how do we basically create Firefox profiling using Selenium WebDriver API. So we will see what is the concept of Firefox profile, what is it and why do we need Firefox profile. So let's go ahead. And so first of all, the locator tools that are available intrinsically inside the Chrome, Firefox or IE browsers is called uh, the inspect element tool it's like your spy tools that is used for spying on the objects now objects in selenium are nothing but web elements or the uis okay the uis are the buttons or the radio buttons the push button that you see they are considered as web elements in selenium so in order to spy on the web elements, we need to use the inspector ribbon tools already available in Chrome, Firefox and IE browser. Per se. Now, why do we need to spy on the objects? The necessity to spy on the objects lies on the fact that we need to make the script understand that this is where you need to go and write so for example, my script has to write on a particular edit box. So I need to first spy on the edit box, try to understand what are the properties of that edit box. And then based on the properties of the edit box, I will write my script. And then when I run my script, the script will understand, oh, I need to actually go to that particular edit box and type this particular stuff. Now, if you want to write down those kind of scripts where the script needs to go to a particular UI and perform action, perform action can be typing or clicking or anything else. We need to use the spy tools. Okay, the spy tools in Selenium WebDriver is called as inspect element tools and that are ev readily available in your Chrome, Firefox, or IE or Internet Explorer rather browsers. And this will be used to spy on the web elements, as I've told you. Now, for example, let me try to open, uh, for example, the Chrome browser. Now, if I want to actually open my open up the inspect element tool, the inspect element tool can be opened by using the F12 key of the keyboard. This is the spy element or also called as the inspect element present in Chrome browser. So if you click on F12 button, it opens up the inspect element tool. And with this particular tool, I'll be able to spy, let's say on this edit box. Okay, now how do you spy? You have this particular selector, select an element in the page to inspect. So if you click out here and you hover your mouse over that particular element and click on that, you will see that the HTML script pertaining to that edit box gets highlighted. And this HTML script which gets highlighted is particular to that edit box. Now, how do I spy on the edit box? If you see out here, we'll see that the HTML script has a class attribute whose value is GSFI, an ID attribute whose value is LSTIB, it has a max length attribute whose value is 2848, name attribute whose value is Q. And there are other attributes for this particular HTML script pertaining to the edit box. Now, based on these attributes present in the HTML script for the edit box, we will 
create our scripts so that the scripts understand the oh this is the attribute of that edit box whose value is gsfi for example or this is the attribute called class present in the edit box whose value is equal to gsfi so based on that it will be able to type in in that particular edit box so with this inspect element tools i'm spying on the attributes present in the html script for the edit box similarly let's say i want to spy on google search so i'll just click on this particular button it's it's a select an element in the page to inspect and I'll just hover your mouse over the google search button and this is the html script pertaining to your google search button the html script contains a lot of attributes and its values it has an attribute called value whose value is google search it has an attribute called name whose value is bt and k so i can write a script where i tell my script boss please find out the name attribute in a particular web element whose value is bt and k and if you find it out please type in or other please click on that particular button so this is why we need to spy on the web elements html script based on which we'll be able to create our script and we'll based on which the script will work and run and do actions on the particular web element so if you compare with your qtp or right now it, it is called as hp uft the hp uft has something known as object spy similarly when we use selenium web driver we'll use this inspect element tool already present in the browsers that we use so like your chrome browser we'll also see that if we open up your firefox okay and if we do a right click or let's say if i click my f12 button okay it is going to open the inspect element tool or the other manner is that i can click let's say i want to look at the html script of this edit box present in the yahoo page i need to just right click and go to this inspect element option this opens up the inspect element tool through which i can spy on that particular web element now for example this also has a button like this pick an element from the page to choose from so if i click out here and hover my mouse over this edit box and click we'll see that the html script pertaining to that element gets highlighted and if i hover my mouse over this html script the corresponding edit box also gets highlighted and if you see out here it has different attributes called id whose value is this class whose value is this or auto capitalize whose value is this so these are attributes and its value so i can basically write down a script based on the attributes and its values and tell the script to perform an action of typing in this particular edit box so like your chrome and firefox ie also has inspect element too so if i open up ie right now let's open up ie let's say no so let's open up ie right now and if i click on the f12 button of my keyboard i will see that the inspect element tool opens and this is the inspect element tool pertaining to the ie browser okay now there is a button called uh, select an element so if i click on this button and hover my mouse over this edit box for example click I hope there's no problem in this. Yeah. So you will see that if you click on that edit box, the HTML script pertaining to the edit box gets highlighted. And the HTML script will show you the attributes called name whose value is Q and table index whose value is equal to one, ID whose value is equal to, for example, Q. So these are the attributes and its value. So if I tell my script, first please go to the attribute and this is the value of the attribute and type in that the HT, the web driver script will actually find that web element with that particular attribute and its value for example i'm picking up name so it will try to find out which attribute which html web element or other which web element has an attribute whose name value is equal to q 
if it finds out that this edit box has a attribute name whose value is equal to q it will type on this edit box this is how we will use inspect element in our ie browser and whether it is firefox browser or ie browser or chrome browser we can use the f12 button present in our keyboard to open up the inspect element tool so that's about the inspect element tools available in our browsers like chrome firefox and internet explorer the next thing is that there is an extra add-on available only for firefox browser and that extra add-on is called the firebug the firebug is another inspect element tool to inspect on the html script of a web element firebug is considered as an add-on of firefox browser and it is only available for firefox browser firebug has an add-on called as firepath so if we want to install firepath the first thing that we need to do is install firebug in Fire, firefox browser then only we can install firepath because firepath is considered as an add-on of firebug the firebug will give us or rather show us the html scripts of the web elements on which we can spy whereas the firepath will give us the xpath of the web element xpath means the location of the web element on a particular page the location can be top left corner that a button is present the location can be that a button is present in right hand bottom corner so this location top left corner is not equal to bottom right corner so one button is present in top left corner one button is present in bottom right corner the position of these buttons are not same that is what firepath gives the firepath will tell us the x part or the position of the web element on that particular page with respect to the screen so we'll look at firebug the first thing that we need to do is open a firefox browser okay i will close the inspect element right now and if i want to install firebug in my firefox browser what i need to do i need to go to I click on the menu button add-ons i already have the add-ons installed we can see that so what i will do i will remove it first remove firepath also and restart my firefox browser so let's wait for the browser to open So the browser has opened and opens up the add-on manager too. So right now I'll show you how to install Firebug first. The first installation that we need to do is installing the Firebug. So for that I need to go to get add-ons, click on that and here I need to search for the add-on called as firebug this is the firebug official website ensure that you are opening the website by opening the firefox browser and install firebug this button has to be clicked the current is stable version is 2.0.17 and understand one particular thing it is compatible with firefox 37 to 47 version and what is the version we are using in firefox the Firefox browser version is 48.0.2. That's fine. We'll download this particular version of Firebug and install it. Add to Firefox. This particular button comes, clicks on that, and say install.
as an add-on of Firefox browser. So Firebug has been successfully installed. And the next thing that we need to do is actually go to our add-on again by clicking on the menu button and we are supposed to search for now Firepath. Firepath needs to be installed after we have installed Firebug because Firepath is considered as an add-on of Firebug. Firepath add-on for Firefox. So click on this particular link and this is the button on which I need to click. Install. Click on the install button and we need to restart our browser now. So restart it. We'll wait for the Firefox browser to open again. I hope it is open. Let us see that. Yeah, it has opened. So if we go out here, so we'll close all the other tabs. Close this also. Go to the menu button, click on that, go to add ons, and check out the extensions. We see that Firebug and Firepath has been installed right now. How do you use it? So for example, if when you install Firebug, you will see this particular button coming out in your tray. So if you click on this particular button with the bug symbol, that's precisely your Firebug and the version is 2.0.17. So click on that and you can start using Firebug for the purpose of spying on the HTML scripts of the web elements. Now, if you see inside Firebug, you have a tab called Firepath. Now, if you go to the HTML tab and click on this particular arrow button and hover my mouse over this edit box of Yahoo search engine and click out here, I will see that the HTML script of that edit box gets highlighted. Plus, if I hover my mouse over the HTML script, I will also see that the HTML or rather the edit box gets highlighted by default. So we'll see that the edit boxes HTML script is this plus if I hover my mouse over the HTML script of the edit box, the edit box also gets highlighted. Now if you see, we can see that the attribute ID whose value is something out here, class attribute whose value is this type whose value is this table index whose value is this. So we can use these attributes and their values in our Selenium web driver script in order to locate this particular edit box web element and type on it. This is how we can also use Firebug for the purpose of spying on the object. So in the sense, we are trying to look at the HTML script of the edit box and write our web driver script based on that. Similarly, let's say I want to get the position of the edit box. Then how do I do that? So we see that we have installed Firepath. So if we click on Firepath tab, and I use the inspect element tool again. I click out here and hover my mouse, let's say on this button and click. I will see that this is cropping up in the X path section. So this is nothing but the X path of this search button. And this X path is nothing but the position of the search button in this particular page. Similarly, let's say I want to get the X path of this edit box. So I have to click on this button again called the inspect element button and hover my mouse over that particular edit box. You will see there is a blue border. Click there. You will see that the HTML script is also shown and it is getting highlighted. Plus in the X path, you will see that this is what is cropping up. So this is the X path of this edit box. That means this is the position of this edit box in this particular web page, which is opened right now. This is how we can use Firepath and Firebug for the purpose of spying on the object or rather for locating the objects. And these locator locators can be used for the purpose of locating this 
web elements through the Selenium web driver scripts. So I'll close the fire button right now. Coming back to our presentation. This is how we install Firebug and Firepath. Let's go to the next slide. 